Happy 420 day to you guys. There we go. Justin, say what's up to the good folks. What's going on, everybody? It's uh, 420, like uh, Tim said. Really happy to yeah. be here on a Tuesday night. That's right, man. I'm going to say what's good to the people. Yeah, yeah, I'm glad to be here as well. I'm not much of a partaker of the 420, but I love to see all all the people high as fuck out there. That's <laughs> and no, right? It's how this became a unofficial holiday. I never know, <laughs> but you know, there's rumors that it was uh it was a penal code, which wasn't true. I I actually traced it back. It was a group of guys in California in high school. At every day at 4:20 p.m., they would start uh, smoking. And that's the genesis of it. There was an urban legend that 420 was a penal code for like a possession of marijuana, which mm -hmm. is huh. not true. So uh, there's that. But anyway, welcome mm -hmm. to the Cover Price Top 10. They probably don't want to be affiliated with 420 Day, but hey, they are. <laughs> this show is sponsored by our friends at CoverPrice.com. Go to CoverPrice.com for your price guides, collections, and trends. Uh, sign up for a two-week free trial or $2.99 for basically a, a minimal guide and minimal collections or a whole $6.99 Price of a McRib when they're in season, you can get the full blown list on all the exclusives. The show is also sponsored by our friends at KRSComics.com. Use the discount code of LOTLB to get 15% off of everything, including this that you will only see on KRS Comics website tomorrow at noon yes. Eastern, 9 Pacific. This is the Mike Mayhew drip variant. And you can tell the difference between that one and the other one is. See that? He has full costume. Here he's yeah. got this little. Yeah. I like so, this one, man. Yeah. The pricing on it is uh, fifty dollars for unsigned, um, eighty dollars for signed with the COA, or you get a signed CGC series for nine point eight, and use the discount code L O T L B to get fifteen percent off any of those. I would tell you that the other cover, um, all sold out except for cover A. So if you go to KRS website right now, you can still get cover A of this guy, but the sign sets and of a and b and the virgin and the slabs are all sold out um and this was also sold out as well you may still be able to find cover a guys i don't know how to we tell you guys this just log in at 9 a.m or 12 p.m <laughs> wherever you are and just make sure you have a signed account put it in your fucking shopping cart don't fuck around and just get it because these are they sell out really quickly and our man Karis comics kills it with the variants mm -hmm. Uh, oh, yeah. for what they select, man. I just uh, they do a great job with the cover that they they select. Um, you never see them do Rob Liefeld covers either. I no. Why. Or you never see them do Donny Cates covers. Speaking of which, oh, wrong one. <laughs> anyway, I was like, I was like, I invoked his name and I forgot. To do it. There you go. Shout out to Donny Cates and everything that you do for the combo book community. All right, this is the cover price top ten where we look at the top ten movers of the week. Uh, this is for the week ending. I had to put April 20th, so, you know, I'm saying because since it's Tuesday, mm -hmm. Tuesday, but as usual, this is the top 10, but there's always one that doesn't quite crack the top 10, and we like to call that the runner-up. There should be no surprise this week. That runner-up is, that's right, Wolverine number one. We've been telling you about this for years now, back when it was $200 for a 9.8, which it still was back in December 2020, but it was long undervalued, and it's finally picking up the pieces of Wolverine like Madripoor appearing in the MCU. He's coming and these key issues are moving up, are moving up. It sold 38 copies at a 70 trend of 130%, a high sale of $680 for a 9.8. You know what? And you know what? These aren't even that easy to get in a 9.8 because a lot of them had this weird shipping uh, manufacturing defect where the spine was like at an angle and it's an all black cover. But yep. I know. The first mention of Madripoor, you know, people are like, you know, Wolverine is coming, or at least Patch is coming, you know, so... This is the first wall book I ever bought. I remember when I was a kid, they had it for like 20 bucks up on the wall, and I remember thinking 20 bucks was just insanity. Like, oh my right, God. Right? You're like, oh man, can I put down a layaway? Can I, I was like, how can I ever get $20 <laughs> to purchase this book? Well, my I got first it wall eventually. Yeah, my first wall book that I bought as an adult, well, when I was a kid, my first wall book that I saw was a What If number one, right? Uh, when I was in the, like uh, my early 20s, the first wall book that I bought was ASM 300, and it was $50. Damn, Damn. wow. Yeah, and well, I thought I mean, that was expensive at the time. Well, yeah. Let me get into this. Actually, my first wall book was the same thing, Zach. It was a, a Wolverine 1 and then the number 8 with him and Hulk on the cover. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Those books yeah. are crazy. And, and when I say wall book, I don't mean slabbed either. Yeah, no, no, yeah, I know. No, these were, yeah, that was that my, these, this way before ZC, these are all like raw. I mean, yeah. You know, but uh, 
I mean, this is one of those things that's a staple of a, a staple of your collection, right? This is like uh -huh. ASM 252 or long. Everybody should have this book. Well, this was a pretty high print run because if you don't remember the madness of 1988, Wolverine was just Wolverine and Punisher comics. Mm -hmm. They were just like the face of Marvel. They were blowing up all over the place. So number one on the list, boys and girls, is Wolverine from 1988. Cool 9.8 sold for 680 bonards. All right. No DJ curse today, so I'm just going to have to tick -a -tick -a -tick -a -tick -a to 10. What do we got for number 10, Justin? Number 10, we have uh, Geiger number one. So this is the third week in a row that we've seen this book on here. This is the main cover. Of course, Jeff Johns doing the writing. His new apocalyptic new series continues to retain its heat and sold 53 copies last week. Seven-day uptrend of 122%. And a high sale sticking about 22 bucks. So not bad for Jeff John's, you know, new independent series. But it dropped precipitously, right? It was, yeah. it was number one. Mm -hmm. um, but I think a lot of, I don't think this book, I didn't see that many copies at my LCS. So I think a lot of yeah. these are aftermarket sales. And that's why it's on this list because people are like, you know what? I missed out it. Or maybe they saw it on this show and they're like, you know what? Maybe uh, we should go get it. But uh you know, Jeff Johns is a proven track record, you know, at least for comics. I don't know so much about the movies, but, you know, he's got at least there's a name that you recognize behind it. So I, a lot of times when I see new comics that come out, I look at the names attached to it, like the writers. And uh -huh. if and if I, if I recognize the writers, I think there's a good chance. If I've never heard of the writer or artist, I'm like, mm, I'm not getting that. But, you know, now that I made that mistake with something is killing the children. Uh, I don't <laughs> know who the hell the writer and artist is of that. But look at that one. Right. What? The writer? Who's the writer? Tinian. Oh, okay. Well, there you go. There's, there you go. There's James Tinian. Though I was okay. D who did Department of Truth? Same. Yeah. Same. So wait, he did both of them. Yeah. yeah he's got more than one book out, and he's doing oh, Batman. Jesus. He's crushing it. And he's yeah. doing Wind. God. W -Y -N -D. Should I should only look at more independent comics. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I just don't. Sorry, man. I mean, I if I do see an independent comic, I'll just pick up like number one just on the off case. And I did get Geiger number one. So there you go. All right. What do we got for number nine, Zach? Number nine, we got another book up from Bad Idea Publishing Company. Uh, this is Tankers number one. Bad Idea's new series hit the market with a boom no pun intended, and sold 79 copies, had a seven-day trend of 102%, and had a high sale of $56 for a raw copy. I, I don't know, man. I haven't... Maybe I should buy into this whole bad idea idea, but um, <laughs> I just I think it's all bullshit, man. It looks like, like smokescreens to me, and I, I can't do it. I don't know. We shall see. I mean, you know... Um... I think this is going to be a trend. We're going to see every bad idea number one yeah, and possibly exactly. even number two, if that's what it is. I remember the idea was you had to pre-order from the stores because it's a limited amount of stores that are getting these books. You can go on Bad Ideas website and see which stores in it, which state are actually going to be carrying them. But you have to pre-order the entire series. So if it's a four-issue miniseries, you have to pre-order all the four issues. That's the only way you get it. Really? Yeah, but, yeah that, was the, that was the original idea. I remember reading it on one of the websites. So is it anybody can pre-order or just comic shops had to pre-order the entire series? Well, I mean, that's that's be the shop. Yeah. yeah, that's the yeah. shop. Okay. Yeah, because that kind of sucks because that's assuming that, you know, they're thinking that, hey, you know, people are going to like it after the first or second issue. And they're kind of stuck on the hook for, you know, all four issues. So, uh, well, hopefully it does good. You know, we hate to see uh, um, it, who is like this one. Who is Robert Venditti? Is that who the writer yeah. is? Yeah. Okay. You know, I know him. He, he's written a lot of Green Lantern, Exo Man of War. Yep. He's actually pretty good. Yeah. He did the New Guardians on New 52. Yeah. yeah. It looks kind of cool. It looks like it's got some some tech uh, mech kind of look to it, right? Is that, I'm assuming that's some type of mech kind of. Yeah. Uh, kind of like aliens. <laughs> yeah. Jesus. I, and this came out, what, last week? Yep. Man, I didn't even see this. I swear to God. I, I mean, this I mean, this has can't be that huge, big of a print run, but either way. A bad idea is making an impression with uh, ideas on your head. Uh, number eight should have been a surprise to anyone. Yeah, this is the hardest one, though. This is Joker number two. This is the Trevor Harrison Santa Prisca Virgin variant, the one in 50. This is the secret variant that came out last week. This issue, of course, features the first appearance of Vengeance, the daughter of Bane and all her glory. With a secret cover appearance on the one in 50, it was scorching hot in those aftermarket prices. It sold 75 copies last week, Seven. Uh, seven day uptrend of 121% and high sale for $343. Poof. 
DC is another one that they don't do many secret variants, if you think about it, right? No. I, mean, uh, I mean, Marvel was kind of, remember they used to throw in this, you know, the, the secret variant and it would just be a variation of what the regular variant was. Mm-hmm. Or I remember the last time I really think about DC was promoting the secret variants when they were doing those bagged um, Harley Quinn variants. Remember those? Mm-hmm. And each one would have a different variant on there. Uh, and then there was a one that was a, like a one in one sketch that was in there. I, I remember yeah. someone was selling it for like, what, five grand or something ridiculous like that. Um, mm-hmm. But that's why I think it's the, you know, for on the DC side, they don't do as many variants. So I think when they do, you know, they have a tendency to sell better, especially this. This is one in 50. So, you know, um, and plus it's a first appearance. So, you know, yeah. uh, DC isn't doing nearly as many first appearances as Marvel's doing so anytime especially we always say it's the Batman effect anything right. related to the Batman family punchline what have you it's always going to be hot when you think about it so uh, there you go Joker number two in at number eight the Trevor hair scene secret variant one and fitty Great title. Next? I'm going to be reading right now as well this yeah. is a pretty this is a pretty interesting book I didn't ever expect this to be on here Oh, yeah. So uh, what are we at? Number seven. So it's actually been a minute, man. It feels like since we've seen a Star Wars book up on here. So we got Lando number two from 2015. This issue features the first appearance of the bounty hunter, Chanath Cha, who will be appearing in the War of the Bounty Hunters comic series. It sold 63 copies, had a seven day trend of 146 percent and had a high sale $20 for a raw copy. So, yeah. So we all know War of the Bounty Hunters is coming here next month in May kickstarting across all the titles and the star wars books and gonna be a lot of new characters hopefully get a lot of fun characters we all know bounty hunters are super hot always in the star wars universe so yeah and i'm you know there could be a good chance that we may see some of them in the boba fett series that's coming to D- disney plus right, right? Mm-hmm. So, you know obviously we already seen them pluck from outside of what is considered disney canon with um you know Thrawn, obviously. So, you know, right now, so I think people are saying, hey, there's a good chance this could be happening. And like we said, you know, Star Wars characters, especially on the Marvel side, are more rare than on the Dark Horse side, where Dark Horse just went, you know, just full on telling different stories. Whereas the Marvel side, there's not a ton of new characters, right? You can count on probably one hand, like Dr. Aphra. And a few others. I'm still waiting for when the first time Grogu and the Mandalorian appear in comics. <laughs> I think that is going to break records. <laughs> I think people are going to go nuts over that because yeah, absolutely. there was supposed to be a comic, but they delayed it. So it's still bound to come out. And I think they're sitting on a gold mine. I, and I'm pretty sure they're going to promote the hell out of it when it does come out. Can you imagine that first baby uh, Yoda? I mean, because I think there's been like variant covers of him. I think that Star Wars Insider is yeah, that's really the, all we've seen is him. Peach Marco did it right. The, yeah. the one with the Star Wars. I'm trying to think if there's ever been any variant covers that they allowed Baby Yoda on. I'm trying to think. I don't think so. I think so, they did a new one, two thousand yeah. two two oh three, because the yeah. two hundred was that Peach one. Yeah, and that has Baby Yoda on it. So maybe that's a first cover appearance. I don't know. I'm just throwing <laughs> stuff out there, man. <laughs> number seven on the list is Lando. Number two, smoothest. I just think of that. I should have. Somebody should have made a Lando. Uh, uh, what was that? Uh, what's the malt liquor he used to promote? Um, Schlitz or uh, come on, help me oh, out. Cold forty five. Cold forty five. Somebody has to make a cold forty five Lando variant. I swear to God, that would be the best ever. So uh, here's a book on the list that I was surprised is still on here. Man, Berserker number one. This is the third print foil from Boom Studios. Not even out yet, but with the heat from the second print foil, this third print began pre-selling like crazy. It's been hitting new highs uh, before its release. It sold 16 copies last week, had a seven-day uptrend of 624%, and a high sale and a pre-order CGC 9.8 for $300. Unbelievable. Yeah, Pre-sales are getting on the top 10 now. Yeah, and it's only going to get higher once they announce. I mean, they've said they're doing a animated series and a live action. I mean, it's only a matter of time before. I mean, uh, when uh, you know when people see it, uh, you know, actually on screen, they're going to lose their shit. We didn't even talk about the Shang Chi trailer. Oh my god, <laughs> I'm not one to do uh, trailer reactions because I don't have the patience to sit oh, there yeah. and say I'm going to watch this for the first time in front of you. No, I watch it like 27 times, and I'm not going to do a YouTube video <laughs> and pretend like this is the first time I'm seeing this trailer. Ooh, ah, oh, but you know what? And um, it was just a teaser. Apparently, um, according to Simo Lu, uh, his own Twitter account, because he never. 
He never promoted it that it was coming. And then Marvel just said, surprise, happy birthday. And they released it on his birthday. And then he was like, uh, he said it was a shot. I don't know how much of that is true, but that was a long Simu- teaser. Yeah. If Simo Lu knew that it was coming, I'm pretty sure he would promote it on his own uh, social media. But even he was like, wow, you know, and it just happened to be his birthday. So, um, you know, some I'm, there were some people saying it's going to come out Monday afternoon. Of course not. Any trailer that Marvel drops is always like first thing in the morning, because by the time oh, yeah. I wake up, my phone was blowing up. <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> I know what that means. Let me go take a lot. Take a look at it. And uh, I the only thing I was concerned, I was like, please let the martial arts action look good. And you know what? Between this and Mortal Kombat, it looks like, you know, at least Hollywood is finally doing um, martial arts films uh, correctly. You know what I'm saying? Before, the, you mm-hmm. know, we had like the Raid series and Ung Back, you know, but now it looks like Hollywood is finally getting some good fight choreography. So number six on the list is Berserker. Number one, the third print, Foil Variant. Good to see Foils back on there. Next book on the list should not be a surprise at all either. Yeah, number five, we got Captain America 25. So it seems there's no end in sight to the Falcon and Winter Soldier bump that so many comic books have enjoyed of late. And Captain America 25 is no exception. With the famous question, who is the new Captain America posed inside the silhouette on the cover? We see the passing of the shield from Steve Rogers to his good friend Sam Wilson, who also proclaims Avengers Assemble for the first time inside these pages. With more and more hype surrounding the show, comics like this continue to rise in value. It sold 58 copies, had a seven-day trend of 120. 120- 175 percent and had a high sale of 600 dollars for a cgc 9.8 good lord i a just 2014 sold the, marvel book jesus i just sold this uh at a lot as a lot in our last auction so uh i shipped all those books out too by the way and in that auction i also had that truth uh, captain america truth book in there yeah. as well mm. um but for those who haven't seen uh the last episode of the falcon winter soldier if you haven't gotten um latino falcon yet you might want to think about getting that one because i'm pretty sure he's going to take those wings and do something right. with them just <laughs> yeah, saying sure. you know i'm just saying and the thought of wakandan w- technology and wings bro come on now because you know i don't know if the u.s government put much money behind uh sam wilson's wings but good lord he tore that shit clear off yeah. and i was like damn <laughs> so get some wakandan technologies maybe some nanotechnology but uh it's no surprise it's been it was teased in a trailer and in Promart that Captain uh, that Falcon is going to be donning his more traditional uh, red costume. So I'm assuming that's what the Wakandans gave him. Uh, I've thoroughly enjoyed the series as a, a long form storytelling. I can't wait for the finale to drop. Uh, each episode, like the last episode, was like a, I counted as an hour and four minutes, and then yeah. the previous one was like 56 uh-huh. minutes. So I'm expecting the last one to be a little bit longer too, man. So stoked. And then we have Loki right after that, man. Awesome, whoa, whoa, whoa. Awesome. we have the bad batch first then we oh yeah the bad oh yeah so we got a little buffer in between uh when is the bad batch premiere uh <clears throat> may the 4th may the 4th be with you all right there we go and when is loki time. when is loki june june, june? Yeah. yeah that's smart of way disney is kind of like disney plus all right we'll give you this like wandavision and then two weeks after that we got the falcon winter soldier and then uh, after you know that we're gonna have black widow this summer uh-huh. so it's a good time man good time good times man oh, i can't wait all right so number five on the list is captain america number 25 in 2014 what do we got for number four well we have uh the joker regular book so joker number two this is you know despite the secret variant taking the most of the market heat this is the standard cover which again is the first appearance of bane's daughter vengeance did sell uh 80 copies last week had a seven day uptrend of 208 percent and a high sale of a raw copy for 25 dollars. and i included this book last week on our auction as well because i said that i'm sure it was going to hit the top 10 and whoever won it you know got the uh number two uh, number four spot so what's her name bane and her last name vengeance. is Ven- vengeance? Well, vengeance. Ven- they haven't vengeance really named her at all yet yeah well yeah no we talked about this uh last week that they one of the one of his thugs calls calls her vengeance does I he call- see I, I read through the panels again and i don't know if he actually calls her vengeance i think he just says the word vengeance well like, uh, like also we'll who in the hell is gonna have sex with bane i mean that's just got to be wild roid roided outrage sex to have i mean is it his daughter daughter or is it like some type of yeah, no one, of him or something? nothing's been nothing's been really been said at all yet yeah well there you go man uh somebody wants to get, not uh, have the seed of bane in them then you know they're going to come out a little bit crazy man so uh, no, number four on the list is the regular cover 
Oh, man, that, number two. That, that uh, man juice has got to be like radioactive glowing. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? He's just injecting her with rage. All right. So uh, number four on the list is Joker number two. Number three, we told you guys this book was going to be on this list last week. Yeah, this should be no surprise as well, you know, with the success of uh, everything going on in the, the – oh, we got it. Mind blank here. The Mark Millar stuff here with Millar Jupiter's versus- Legacy coming out. Yeah, the Starlight number one from 2014 – uh, Dedlin reported that Joe Cornish to write and direct Mark Millar's Starlight for 20th Century Studios. This news helped the standard cover to sell 38 copies, had a seven-day trend of 557%, and had a high sale of $40 for a raw copy. So, yeah, man, it's it's Mark Millar time. You need to be picking up all those books pretty much. Mark, yeah, Mark Millar has the inside track in Hollywood. I mean, pretty much everything. He's got at least four projects lined up. I mean, and that's just on Netflix. Uh, and if you don't know who Joel Cornish is, who did Starlight, go watch Attack of the Block. That was your introduction to, uh, what's his name? Uh, Finn. Um, what's his name? Real name? Uh, from Star Wars? Oh, oh um, yeah, the actor. Brian uh, Boyega. Bo- he was a young actor in that movie, Attack the Block, which was kind of a kid's movie, but not. It was like uh, these English little, uh, I guess, adolescent th- gangsters fighting aliens. And it's called Attack the Block. And it's it, <laughs> one of my favorite little films. If you've never seen Attack the Block, I highly suggest go check out uh, Attack the Block. You see what uh, Joe Cornish, he, Joe Cornish also did uh, a little bit lighter fare. He did that. Uh, it was a King, a King Arthur story um uh about the teenage kid in in like middle school who ends up being uh king arthur oh uh, yeah just, yeah joe cornish did that too but uh starlight is much more uh a, more of an adult story than uh obviously the uh <laughs> prince who would be king or something like, one of those you know what i'm talking about right put yeah. it this way i watched it because i love anything that has to do with uh uh arthurian legend so i totally uh i watched that movie as well so there you go um, you're the king of the Golden State, dropping some knowledge on you. If you want, if you're looking for Millar books, hit up Half Price or Second and Charles. They're loaded with Millar books for your information. Thank right. you, thank you, mm-hmm. King of the Golden State. He probably already has them all. He's saying that to set you up so that he could sell you some. All right, next up on the list is a list a character that pretty much nobody got right. No. Um, for those who are specking on Falcon and the Winter Soldier about the surprise appearance. Uh, a couple of people came close by thinking it was some form of Madam Hydra, but there you go. Man, this is the oldest one on our list. So, yeah. Strange Tales, number 159 from Marvel Comics back in 1967. So, spoiler alert for anybody who hasn't seen last week's episode of Falcon and Winter Soldier. Uh, but Julie Lou, uh, Julie Louis-Dreyfus appeared as Constella Valentina Allegro de Fontaine. And her first appearance is in this Strange Tales of uh, issue, which went crazy last week. Of course, you know, for you people on the West Coast, you guys can get it right at 12 o'clock midnight. Uh, it did sell 62 copies, had a seven-day uptrend to 395% and a high sale of $1,985 for a CGC 9.6, which is, was selling for $565 just two weeks ago in the same exact grade. That's crazy. This is like, so, so this is the first ever I believe iteration of Madam Hydra. There's been a couple of different Madam Hydras, so I, this has been the f- the first one. Oh, uh, this this character was in the original Nick Fury movie with. Uh, that's right, uh, Lisa Renna mm-hmm. played her. I boot. I do believe that horrible yeah. one with uh, David Hasselhoff. Uh, so. Amazing movie film, <laughs> <laughs> of course. It's up there with the original Punisher movie with Dolph Lundgren as greatest that's film right. of all time. Uh, so there was the, and that was a made for TV movie, I do believe, right? The Nick Fury, uh, Nick Fury, Agent, Agent of Shield, a Nick Fury, Agent of Shield, and yeah. Lisa Renna, the one with the overinflated lips, uh, played mm-hmm. the Madam Hydra in that one. And of course, who can forget the Hasselhoff with an eye patch and a cigar? <laughs> so him right on the cover, right there. Yep. Oh man, look at that karate chop. Oh man, but yeah, it's good to see. Oh I mean, Jesus. For a second, I thought that was Namor. <laughs> I don't know. I looked at it. I was like, well, that's a weird karate chop from Namor. Yeah, and you get Nick Fury with a shirt off. Look at that. Sexy cover, huh? All right. So there you go. So number two on the list is Strange Tales. Number 159 from 1967. Um, I've heard that she will. Louis Dre- Louis Dre- Dreyfus, by the way, who was excellent in Veep. Fucking love that. Yes, She's love hilarious Veep. in that show. Um, well, be helping to form the Thunderbolts with um, U.S. agent. 
So John Walker mm-hmm. will live on to be part of Thunderbolts with Contessa de la Fontaine. That's what I've been told. So I don't know. This may have some legs on it, but you know, I man. got a Baron Zemo vibe too. When they said they're taking him back to the raft. Don't forget that Thunderbolts operated out of the raft for a while. Yep. As well. So I can see Zemo, John Walker, the uh, Madam Hydra, all kind of forming the Thunderbolts. And there's somebody still, I, we still don't know who the power broker is yet. Um, you guys think it's, I don't, it can't be Sharon Carter, right? It seemed no. like they hinted at that this last ish, last episode, though. Yeah, I was kind of wondering that obvious. as well. It's almost too obvious, I think. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know. I think she's the double secret agent. So, because you know, because I think backtrack and also uh, the backtrack, the leaper, whatever his name, George Saint Pierre, mm-hmm. could be also part of that Thunderbolts team. Um, but I think, like when she called them, I think she was like setting up to he they could uh, set up um, the Flag Smashers as well and then throw him away but i don't know i mean if sharon carter ends up being the power broker that would be kind of a, a bummer because that would make no sense at all right how she just totally just went off like that i'm like you know yeah. it, 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 it would make more sense if somehow she end up being something for good but uh, either way i'm really excited and excited about this friday to see what happens man so strange tales number 159 from 1967 round wow, we rarely yet ever get this on the top 10 list normally it's a shakers list but a 395 percent trend man this book wasn't that expensive before so there you go all right so uh number one on the list is something i had no idea about yeah this is a crazy one man uh and honestly when's the last time we had a dark horse book on this list because i can't honestly remember but this is uh jenny zero number one with a surprise for the number one spot, this issue is trending due to recall over an error slash misprint within the issue where page 12 was printed with a page from issue number two. Uh, Collectors love recalled slash error comics and raced online to get a copy. Sold 95 copies, had a seven-day trend of 504%, had a high sale of $43 for a raw copy. But However, due to the flood of copies, sales have settled to about $12. I've never been this this kind of a collector. I know that that's the niche out there is these like yeah. books, and that's not my thing, man. Well, I mean, when it's just like a couple of pages, uh, there's re- like when the when the you know when the cover is like a totally different color or mm-hmm. something like that, uh, that type of error, then you know, like you know, sometimes there's you know the comic is black and white when it should be color, but you know this one is just you know what two pages are transposed so the story is make i guess a little off but uh i feel bad for like you know people of jenny zero and then they're you know wow number one jump then nobody's buying issue number two right, right. <laughs> I mean, yeah um because uh yeah I, like i said never even heard of jenny zero and nothing about news about being an option for a movie or film or anything like that but it's on a number one because uh collectors like oddities like this but a lot of times, man, you got to jump on these things quick, man, because, uh-huh. uh, you know, they dry up on the dr- aftermarket. I can't, and you got to think, you know, there wasn't many um, uh, printings of this. Yeah, I mean, definitely not for it, this I mean, book. And what's going to happen is they're going to send it out again with the correct pages. So, you know, you got to be careful of that, too, because people are going to be looking for it and it's not going to be the right one. So just be careful. Uh, if you have it, sell it now because there'll probably be another printing coming out where it's going to have the proper page count in it but uh there you go man look at that cool 33 minutes not bad at all remember boys and girls uh a show sponsored by our friends over at krscomics.com tomorrow at 9 a.m pacific 12 p.m eastern this it's called the drip variant this is miles morales number 25 this is the mike mayhew drip variant you can get an unsigned for 50 signed raw with coa for 80 or signature series 9.8 for 200 bucks so remember set your alarms it goes off and you use the discount code of lotlb and you get 15 percent off and that makes a big difference when you're buying that 9.8 yellow label but uh this mm-hmm. drip is dope so just so you can see the difference between the drip and the regular cover uh, which mostly sold out. See how he's in full costume here. And the drip cover has him uh, kind of, uh, this is like into the Spider-Verse. If you think yeah, when he was wearing it's like, a, the, yeah, his hoodie and everything. So there you go. I like boys this one a lot. Yeah, uh, it kills it. And Miles Morales, like I said, anything Miles Morales is hot. So speaking of hot, Manimo, any last words? Nope, just um, good to be back, obviously. Love doing the show and uh Keep an ear out on Friday for the newest episode of the Comic-Con podcast. Check out any past episodes as well. And uh, we'll be back next week. That's right. Check out the Comic-Con podcast on Spotify. Also, hey, Alexa, play Lords of the Long Box podcast on Spotify. Tell me, Justin, you got to work on the naming so you can just say that. Uh, Can't change it now. (laughs) 
All right, Justin, any last words? Uh, yeah, anybody who bought from me last week on our Friday auction, everything has been shipped out. Uh, so you should get it sometime this week. People who got needed tracking got tracking. If you still haven't gotten your tracking, just hit me up. We'll take care of that. But uh, like Zach said, we'll see you Friday for the next Comic-Con podcast episode. That's right. And we will see you Thursday for the Cover Price Shaker Show. Uh, until then, boys and girls, keep digging in them long boxes and peace out.